Welcome to week eight of the Money Talks. This is Jason Mizrahi from the Sharp app, and I'm paired with the one and only David Meltzer, legendary sports executive. And we're going to start the show a little bit different this week. Before we get into the bets, this is the Money Talk show. And David, I know you're pretty good at handling money and the concepts about growing wealth. So let's hit the the, the viewers, the listeners with some some money talk, man, like something that you think that they can carry throughout their lives, whether it helps them today, tomorrow, in the future, a money principle that you kind of carry along with you that helps, you know, grow your wealth. You know, for me, the Melter Money uh, madness is really to understand, number one, before you do any prospecting, betting, investing, you need to know your own timing and risk tolerance. Uh, if you know your timing and risk tolerance, number one, you're admitting the ignorant humility that you don't know what you don't know. You know, we, we can guess and hedge and prospect, uh, but when we're investing, gambling or prospecting, we're making our best assumptions. And the best way to win is to know your timing and risk tolerance and align your investing, your prospecting and your betting with the timing and risk tolerance that you have. Therefore, you will always be a winner when it comes to investing. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And for me, a lot of paper trading, a lot of practice, a lot about gathering research, understanding your risk tolerance. Those are all huge things before you make an investment. And, you know, throughout the NFL season, if you're making your bets, you know, have a bankroll to last the entire season. Don't try to make it all up in one week. You know, have a goal, have a bankroll and, and work towards an entire season of, you know, having some entertainment, having some fun with it. Don't overstress yourself out. Don't play without, you know, money in the bank and really try to live for another day, another week for the entire season, you know, make it to the Super Bowl with some bets left and some budget left to maybe hit a nice little prop or a fun prop or, you know, maybe carry profits through the entire time. And if you're following our guys, Steve and Anthony and John and Ryan and Rich and Adam, the rest of the guys, I know they've been profitable week over week, month over month. So have some confidence, have some discipline. But let's get into week eight. We got a big slate. The first game I want to talk about, the Lions and the Eagles. I think the Lions personally can win this game outright. I think the Eagles, you know, just having troubles all over the field, offense, defense, Really not a strong team. They've won a couple games, but haven't been in too many other games. I think the Lions have been really close in games. I know you went to a game where Tucker sealed the deal with that long field goal, but I think the Lions can win this game outright, but I'm taking the three and a half points. What's your thoughts here? And what's the problems with these Eagles? Why can't they get things together with Jalen Hurts? Yeah, look, you need a leader that can make the big plays, and Jalen Hurts isn't that guy. So – uh, I will tell you that I've watched football for now, you know, 48 years, probably I've watched football and the Lions are the best 0 and 7 team I've ever <laughs> seen. Oh my gosh. They are. I saw them against the Rams last week. I was there and they were fighting toe for toe, a couple good breaks and they, they would have won that game. Uh, so I'm with you. I think the Lions can win this game out, Red. I think the Eagles have troubles on all three sides of the ball because what they truly have is leadership problems and when that energy of lack of leadership pervades the offense the defense and the special teams you got a big problem this is the week the lions go one and seven there you go i like that call i'm with you on that i'll take the three and a half points but i wouldn't be shocked if they win the game outright they they, they can't just be on the wrong side every single time like you said they've been in games with good teams the ravens um, even the Rams, I was shocked they were in that game for so long, but they played aggressive. Goff couldn't make that last throw, but they're so close to winning game. I think it comes this week. Now the Jags and the Seahawks, I think Vegas has his line wrong. I think both these defenses are very suspect. You know, we saw a game where Seattle was trying to grind out a win against New Orleans, but there was weather concerns there. They're getting, they're not going to get, you know, Russell Wilson back, but Geno's looking pretty good. He's not looking terrible and some tough matchups to start. And then Trevor Lawrence and this offense in Jacksonville, I think they can put up some points too. So I like the over 44 and a half. What do you think about Geno? Does Geno put up enough points to push this game over? Because the Seattle defense is not good either. Do you have enough confidence in Geno Smith and Trevor Lawrence to put up points? I have enough confidence in Trevor Lawrence to put up points. I think the second week 
uh, for any quarterback uh, is difficult when they step into the role. The first week, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of preparation. It's that second week that it takes the week-to-week experience of a, a starter like Russell Wilson in order to effectuate you know, getting that offense rolling. So with Metcalf and uh, and others, I, I think the line's right on, to be honest. So I, I wouldn't take the bet either way. I'm not saying you're wrong, uh, but I definitely am not overwhelmed. I, I'm much more confident in the Lions bet. All right, there we go. We got the Bucks now going to New Orleans. Brady trying to win an MVP at his age because he's pretty much up there with Kyler Murray. I think he's got it in the bag if it ended right now. Kyler's close. Aaron's close, but Brady doing what he's doing. Looks like he's going to get his full team back. He's going to get Gronk probably back. He's going to get Antonio Brown back. The line's four and a half. I just don't see a way that the New Orleans Saints put up enough points to hang with Brady. I like the Bucks here, four and a half. This is probably one of the easier bets for me. What's your thoughts here? Does, does Brady just come into town and just dismantle the Saints defense? Look, we're sitting in the same place we were when the Bucks played New England. And I told you the only way that this is a game is if Belichick knows the Achilles tendon of Tom Brady. And but for one kick, uh, you know, we would have seen a tremendous uh, 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 defeat upset, of yeah. the Bucks. The upset, yeah. And look, Sean Payton has uh, Tom Brady's number, and uh, I think this is an easy, easy bet. My only fear, once again, is that great coach having. Tom Brady's number from seeing him so many times that somehow he has this uh, Achilles tendon type of uh, uh, mis- misnomer, I'll call it. But uh, I think this is an obvious one, unless there's some kind of uh, secret sauce that Sean Payton has. Yeah, and I like the Bucks here. Now a quarterback that I'm not too high on. Two quarterbacks I'm not too high going and off in the same game. This should be a snooze fest. It's not a game that you're going to want to watch. A lot of drama in Chicago. Sam Fran dealing with a bunch of injuries. This is from our guy, Statsational. So that's why I feel confident about it because he's putting out the bet on this one. Chicago plus four against the Niners. I'm going to have to back him up here, man. I think Chicago just does enough to win this game. You know, good defense. But Niners have been playing tough. This game is more meaningful for the Niners because they actually have some playoff aspirations. Nagy and Chicago really struggling here. But – we're going to take the Bears plus four. What's your thoughts about Justin Fields and this, this Bears offense? Can he get clicking against the Niners? I think so, and I agree with Stat Stational as well. Uh, and you, uh, I'm actually looking at, you know, maybe tying in two money lines in a parlay on two underdogs to get the exponential uh, return on my investment. So <laughs> I like the Lions money line, Chicago money lines, and then drop in a couple favorites and get some exponential return on my investment. But those are two of the upsets that I think you're correct on. Now we have Carolina, another pick from Statsational here. He likes Carolina plus three. Sam Donald came out of the gate looking good, you know, putting numbers up in the first couple of weeks. He did have McCaffrey in a couple of those games. He lost McCaffrey, this team. Donald, the first three weeks looked great. Last four weeks looked pretty terrible. One of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Going to Atlanta, playing the Falcons, getting three points here. He likes Carolina. This one's questionable for me because I I don't know which Sam Donald is going to show up here. Falcons defense is really bad. So I can see Carolina, you know, getting things right as far as offense, defense, more of a complete team here. So we like Carolina plus three. What's your thoughts about Sam Donald going to play Matt Ryan and the Falcons? Well, I think you're overestimating, you know, how a player can play poorly or, or well. Any quarterback on any given Sunday can play well. Um, it's more, why are you consistently playing bad? And that was my fear with Carolina. Um, and I think the Falcons are better than the record indicates as well. I'm actually going to go against the geniuses on this one. I like the Falcons minus three. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a stay away spot for me because I really just don't like the quarterback in Darnold and I can't really back a team that I'm not too confident in quarterback. But we also have another game. Probably a snooze fest, not a game most of America wants to watch here. But these are the games that John likes and Sensational gives me enough confidence to go out there and roll these games. Same thing with Steve and then guys on our Sharp app. These guys, like last night, I just trailed Steve on all his bets. He went 8-1, and one, David. Like Whoa. 8-1, eight, eight and one, and it's not it's like by accident. The night before, he went like 6-3. and three. He's net positive 
And we got to get some of his bets, but he actually waits till like Sunday morning to place all his bets. So if you want the rest of his bets, you got to go into the app, you know, make sure you download the Sharp app and check it out. But Statsational, his last play of the week so far, and we'll have more on Sunday. We'll have more props. It's Washington plus three and a half against the Broncos. I do like this bet. I think Washington's coming around, starting to get some confidence here. I don't know if they're playoff bound, but Heineke's looking better. This offense is looking better, and the Broncos are still struggling with Bridgewater dealing a lot of injuries here. So I like Washington here, plus three and a half. I can get behind this bet. And hopefully this defense in Washington can shore up things because they've looked pretty bad. I just don't know how Chase Young and the boys go from the best defense in the league to the worst defense in the league without losing anybody on that defense. So it's shocking to me how that happened, but we do like Washington plus three and a half. What's your thoughts here? Well, I'm going with Stat Station as well, and I'll tell you why. Because if he went eight and one last time, I've already picked the one that he's going to screw up on, which is the Falcon game. So I'm going with him on all the rest. So I'm going to be a good six for six on these and let him miss one. So I right, definitely like Washington. Before we let you go, Dave, I got to ask you a question from a from an organizational level. What is wrong with these Chiefs? What is wrong with Patrick Mahomes? What's wrong with Kelsey in this offense? Because I was shocked last week, man. I would have never thought they would go down like they went down. They're playing now. You know, they're playing on Monday night. They got another easy matchup, I guess, or it should be an easy matchup against the New York Giants. I don't even want to ask about the line right now. I just want to ask what's wrong because Andy Reid, Mahomes, the offense is just not putting up points, and they're the best of the best of the best. What's really wrong with that team? Mahomes. You know what happened? You signed a half a billion dollar contract and you won some games and you get married and you have life happen to you. Not everybody's Tom Brady, right? Not everyone has the desire that they must be what they can be every single year. We've seen it with Cam Newton, who may be the most talented quarterback ever to stand on a football field as far as athleticism go and talent. Uh, But you need one thing as the great Drew Brees and Tom Brady uh, even Philip Rivers, who wasn't as talented as those two, but at least he had the desire that he must be what he can be. And on the offseason, you know, that's what he did. That's why Philip Rivers retired is he knew he didn't have what it takes. And guess what? Once Mahomes did not prepare for this season like he did for all the others, that subtlety of success has really caught him, as well as I think a lot of the comp- uh, opponents in the AFC West got their shutdown corners back so they could shut down Tyreek. Now it's easy to handle Kelsey when you have a shutdown corner on Tyreek, which makes the challenge for Mahomes even more uh, aggressive. And if he's not prepared, and he's not, he's throwing the ball, he's not reading like he was, he's not processing, and he's making bad decisions because he's not prepared. That's the biggest difference. It's not Andy Reid, it's Patrick Mahomes. That's a good point, man. And that just shines light, you know, whether you're – you're betting, you're playing DFS, you're, you're running a business, or, you know, in the NFL where any day of the week you would say Patrick Mahomes is top two, top three, you know, quarterback in the league. You ask anybody off the street, they'll go ahead and say that. But if you're not prepared and other people are out working you and you're shooting commercials and hanging out with Baker Mayfield and, and doing stuff like that, um, Things can get bad really, really quick. And like you said, it's not always the most talented or the the person with the best athleticism who make it in the NBA. You know, the ones that really work year in and year out. And it gives credit to guys like Brady, guys like LeBron and Jordan. They just don't like losing. And they're so competitive that they can still do a commercial or two. But their, their drive is just so much, so much deeper than anybody can ever realize. And Brady to be this consistent for this many years, it's shocking, man. It's really crazy to see him do it on, on that type of level, but you know it. I know it. The dude probably outworks everybody every single day. And it's not just about throwing the ball. It's X and X and O's training your body, preparing, getting sleep, every single aspect of it. And I guess Mahomes is just slipping and maybe some of the guys on the offense are kind of slipping along with them because it's definitely showing. Do you think they can turn around the, this year or this year is pretty much lost at this point oh no they could turn it around you know uh, take a few games to get back on the track this might be the wake-up call that they need they can run off six seven eight games in a row that's for sure but Patrick Mahomes has to stop watching the squid game and start watching the football game (laughs) 
No, I like that call. David, I appreciate you stopping by. Everybody can follow David, obviously, in the Sharp app. Also follow him at David Meltzer on every social media platform, on TV. Everywhere you go, you can check him out. Got, got a lot of great content on social media. Got books out. So, David, any last words before we let you go? Always have the famous last words. Be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. Make a lot of money. Help a lot of people. Have a lot of fun. Thank there you, you go. Much. That's the Money Talk Show for week eight. We'll be back next week to hopefully count some money, win some money. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.